My name is Kaylee, and as most of you by now will know, I am immensely intrigued by fossilized footprints. I have made the joke in the past that I have a fossilized footprints fetish. Not a foot fetish. Feet are absolutely disgusting to me, but fossilized footprints are incredible. Especially because fossilized footprints can tell us quite a lot about the makers of the footprints, their approximate age, the activity they were doing while they were making the prints, and if they were carrying something or someone, and a lot of other things. So today I'm going to tell you all about the recently discovered Neanderthal footprints at two separate locations on the southwestern coast of Portugal that date back to 82,000 and 78,000 years ago. And these are considered to be the first two hominin track sites found in the southwesternmost region of Europe. possibly know how old these fossilized footprints actually are. I often get this question in my comments whenever I talk about fossilized footprints, because people don't really understand how these footprints are dated. So to determine the age of fossilized footprints, the researchers use optical stimulated luminescence dating techniques, and I will quickly explain how that works. Optical stimulated luminescence dating is used to determine the time since a material, usually sediment, was last exposed to daylight. So when certain minerals, like for instance quartz, are exposed to daylight, they store energy from background radiation when they get buried. And when these minerals are then illuminated with light, they release the previously stored energy as light. And by measuring that light signal, the luminescence, the time since burial can be calculated. And this is a really great dating technique to uncover the age of fossilized footprints, which are usually located in a sandy area near a body of water. And we all know that sand contains a lot of minerals, especially a whole lot of quartz. So optical stimulated luminescence dating is one of the most precise dating techniques that we can use to determine the age of fossilized footprints. And that's why it's so often used for it. And you may wonder how the researchers were able to determine that the footprints were left by Neanderthals and not by Homo sapiens, you know, us modern humans. And their answer to that is very simple. It is impossible to distinguish between Neanderthal and Homo sapiens footprints, as these two human species are extremely similar. But the age of the footprints tell us that they would have to have been made by Neanderthals, because approximately 80,000 years ago, they were the only human species living in the southwest of Europe. So to the researchers, there is absolutely no doubt that these fossilized footprints were made by Neanderthals, as they are confident in the results of the optical stimulated luminescence dating. So now that we know all that, it's time to look into the footprints. So the footprints were discovered at two coastal sites, located approximately 36 kilometers apart, which equates to roughly 22 miles. And they were found in the Algarve region in Portugal, and the footprints were left by adults, children, and even toddlers. So first, let's take a quick look at the site with the oldest discovered footprint, as they have only found one single footprint here, and thus the information surrounding this one footprint is kind of limited. So this footprint was discovered at Praia do Telhairo, near the surfing hotspot of Sagres. It seems like the footprint was left behind by a teenager or possibly a young woman, and this footprint dates back to 82,000 years ago. Again, this date came up by the research of the optical stimulated luminescence dating techniques. So unfortunately, there are no additional footprints discovered at this particular location. But this one footprint does confirm the presence of Neanderthals and the fact that they inhabited these coastal areas in Portugal during the Pleistocene. So while this one footprint is the oldest discovered fossilized footprint in the country of Portugal and in the entirety of the southwest of Europe, this is not the biggest discovery when it comes to these recently found fossilized footprints here in Portugal. So just 36 kilometers north of the discovered lone footprint found at Praia do Telhairo is where the researchers discovered more footprints. In fact, they discovered five separate trackways with a total of 26 footprints. So the researchers discovered these 26 footprints at Praia do Monte Clerigo, and the researchers were able to determine that the five trackways were left by three separate individuals. 
One of these individuals was an adult male. He seemed to have ascended the cliff dune twice and descending the cliff dune once. So it seems like this one male individual left three trackways here at the cliff dune. The other two trackways seem to have been made by children. One of them between seven and nine years of age, and the other trackway seemed to have been made by a toddler, probably younger than two years old. And then the researcher stumbled upon the fossilized footprints of a red deer here on the same dune. And thus the researchers concluded that the Neanderthal family that left the footprints were most likely hunting the deer, using the undulating landscape to attempt to sneak up on their prey. Red deer seemed to have a tendency to jump into the sea and drown when they were stalked, and the Neanderthals may have used the sandy terrain to slow down their prey in their attempt to escape their spears. So this dune landscape here on the southwest coast of Portugal would have been perfect for ambush hunting strategies, which was something that the Neanderthals seemed to have specialized in. And because it seems to have been a family that was hunting on this dune, the researchers have speculated that there may have been a Neanderthal campsite nearby. Especially when we consider the footprints of the less than two-year-old toddler among the adult and seven to nine-year-old child, showing that the Neanderthal children were most likely present on the day-to-day -day activities. So they were probably learning these skills from a very, very young age. These newly discovered footprints also show us that Neanderthals lived near the sea and other coastal regions, taking advantage of all the resources that the area would have offered. The diet of these Neanderthals in this area seem to have mostly consisted of red deer, horses, aurochs, and hares, but they also seem to have consumed quite a bit of shellfish and fish, which indicates that they were very flexible in their feeding strategies, so they were probably adapting to what they found in each location. And this study adds new pieces to the puzzle of Neanderthal life and culture, and reinforces once again the idea that they were far more adaptable and intelligent than previously thought. As we all know, the sea levels have risen quite a bit since the last ice age, and thus these footprints are direct evidence of the presence of Neanderthals at a time when sea levels were much lower and coasts were more exposed. And the rise in sea levels after the last glaciation has made the preservation and detection of Neanderthal evidence on the Atlantic coast a lot more difficult, and thus each new discovery is especially valuable. These fossilized footprints revealed to us that Neanderthal families may have hunted together without an age limit for participation. Neanderthals seem to have thrived in these sort of environments, taking advantage of a varied diet and the predictable available resources. So all of this leaves me with one question. What do you think of these discovered fossilized Neanderthal footprints in Portugal? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. Truly means the world to me. And yeah, I mean, I've got a couple of fun videos lined up. I'm working on a lot of scripts at the same time. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my best, but you'll get videos and uh, I'm in need for a vacation, but I will go in the beginning of August. So up until then, I'm gonna need to work my butt off and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.